This weekend at the Bowman Gray Stadium has been plagued by rain, but that's not going to stop this race from getting underway. Alex Carson leads the field to the green flag for the first round of the Madhouse 200, and that is Lev Azarov, car 82 for Rus Autosport on his outside. Alex Carson gets off to a good start, uh, jumping out to about a three-car length lead, heading out of turn two as Azarov faces pressure from Taylor Brillen, who is desperately trying to get her championship hopes back together. Nobody can touch Carson right now as it looks like Brillen is going to complete the pass on Azarov. A bit further back in the field, uh, watch the uh, pie car of Michael Madrigal. He gets tagged by Libby Bell up into uh, Bixby Foot car 14, and that creates a stack up as we're focused on Leslie Riggs. Riggs gets turned by the 14 now, and none of this has brought out a caution yet. Now we've got Ryan Matthews running wide in turn four. He gets into the wall and is turned around in front of the field. Kiki Itsuno, car uh, 707, stuck in the middle of the track as Alex Carson piles into her. That is not the first time that Carson has uh, gotten into an accident. While leading the race, he would have to pit to get that repaired, and he would fall off the lead lap. Kevin Monroe, the 2011 series champion, now leads the race, but Carson and foot are running three wide with, with the 63 right now, trying to get back on the lead lap. That is Casey Campbell, car 422, looking to take advantage of Monroe being displaced from the preferred line. You don't want to be running out of the groove on such a flat track, especially with uh, the downpour that we have right now, as Campbell now on the inside of Monroe, three wide with foot, and Campbell is going to grab the lead as Alex Carson trying to hang on to the tail end of the lead lap. Laura Ocean, car 798, falling into the clutches of Campbell now, who promptly turns the 798 into the grass, across the track, and almost wipes out the 35 of Jesus Ignacio Chavez third. Campbell had built up a significant lead, but the yellow flag is out uh, because she decided to be counterproductive to her efforts. Lenora Scurry smashes into the back of Leslie Riggs, who seems to come to a stop for no reason. And you see uh, the 78 of Andre Kinasa has blown up. I wonder if the uh, 50 was reacting to the 78. On the restart, John Hawks and Dan Lecklider get together and careen into the turn four wall. Zachary Zins almost flips the 114 car over. Yellow flag is out once again. Casey Campbell still leading the race, coming to the restart. Monroe second, Joseph Howard third, and Zach Gott, car seven, in fourth place. Monroe right on the back of Campbell as we now have four wide with two of the lap cars out of turn two. This is not going to end well. Azarov and Foot pushing to get back onto the lead lap. The leaders go up into the wall, and several cars are going to get by and uh, rejoin the lead lap. Uh, there's no yellow flag for this, despite this happening right in front of the flagmen. I think they're just reading B Magazine up there while all this carnage is playing out. Libby Bell is caught in the uh, middle of a big pack here, and uh, she gets turned around along with uh, Jesus Ignacio Chavez the third, car 35. And we see Ali Riggs getting turned around by Laura Ocean. Jack Dempsey stuffed into the end of the pit wall. Big hit for Dempsey. Fortunately, he would climb out of the car okay. And we have another incident off the exit of turn four. Frank Asher uh, propped up on top of the 798. Uh, Taylor Brillen was stuffed into the wall by uh, Rachel Rainsford, Zachary Zins, uh, Asher, and Ocean all collected as well. I think that was Luke Pellerin that... Allie Riggs just piled into, and here come the leaders, Joseph Howard and uh, Zach Gott. They're going to get stuck behind this mess while everything gets sorted out. Michael Madrigal, third place, and Monroe, fourth. Uh, I thought they were going to take advantage of this and sneak by coming back to the caution flag, but Joseph Howard keeps the lead. Oh, Allie Riggs out of the pit lane on the restart, almost wiping out the leaders. Where's the guy with the stop sign at the end of the pit lane when you need him? I think he may be down at the concession stand getting another six-pack of Stelling or whatever the hell these people drink down here as uh, Zach Gott challenging Joseph Howard for the lead. Howard a uh, bit distracted by the lapped car of uh, Lev Azarov. Gott uh, now on the attack as Joseph Howard runs turn two very wide. Zach Gott the rookie and Joseph Howard the former three-time Team Master Cup Series champion duking it out for the lead and it looks like Zach Gott is going to win out as uh, Ali Riggs comes out of the pit lane, wipes out Zach Webster, and we've got a huge pile up off the exit of four, and look at that, it was a good three seconds until the flag man threw the yellow. Well, I suppose it's better than not getting a yellow at all, which I am starting to think is going to happen at some point tonight. Joseph Howard has a problem, I believe he's cut a tire and has to hit the pit lane, but coming out, he uh, 
smashes into the back of Taylor Brillen. Leslie Riggs also comes out of the pit lane and uh, gets into the back of Tanner Clayson. I'm sure that she just had a little bit of trouble stopping in this rain, but Joseph Howard really not paying any attention at all as we have another wreck on the restart. More people not paying any attention coming out of the pit lane. Casey Campbell comes out and uh, wipes out about half the field. Rachel Rainsford, car 71, also turned around back there. Campbell, Howard, and Allie Riggs have all been summoned to uh, race control for uh, just not paying any attention at all coming out of the pits. As Zach Gogg continues to lead this race, Ryan Matthews, car 116, is back on the lead lap. And he is currently running in second, having just taken the position from Michael Madrigal in the pie car. Uh, he's now focusing on uh, Allie Riggs, car 19. And we have Casey Campbell turned around at the exit of four. And another stack up ensues. Campbell was heading out of the pits and apparently didn't see uh, Dan Lechleiter in the 10L, got into the back of him. And Casey Campbell decides enough is enough and parks the car. Uh, fortunately for the rest of the field, although I don't think that's going to save her from a uh, significant penalty as Zach Gott now faces a challenge from Allie Riggs on the restart who really should not be coming after him at all. She is several laps down at this point, not really going to gain anything from racing the leaders. I suppose she's just bored and needs something to do, even if it gives a headache to everybody else. And there she goes, ducking into the pit lane. So really a wasted effort there but Bigsby Foot is a bit closer to the lead lap so uh, I don't blame him so much for racing the leaders as Ryan Matthews trying to hold off uh, Tanner Clayson runs very wide heading into, into turn one opens the door for Clayson Clayson into the back of the 116 and he's around on the back stretch that's another caution right there uh, the first somewhat reasonable caution we've seen in quite a while and we've got another uh, car not paying any attention coming out of the pit lane. That was Barton Sandy. He's been very impressive this year, but not tonight, where he's just making a fool out of himself, along with uh, pretty much everybody else who's pitted tonight. Michael Madrigal uh, adds himself to that list of people making fools of himself as he spears Dan Lechleiter out of the pit lane. Lechleiter, that's the second time that he's been pegged by someone out of the pits. And, oh, look, Ali Riggs causing another accident coming out of the pit lane. Uh, Bigsby Foot and Kevin Monroe stuck there at the exit of four. And here come the leaders coming back to the caution. Zach got nowhere to go. Ryan Matthews into the back of him. Tanner Clayson, that's the whole top three right there. Your top three are all sitting there wadded up at the exit of four. Uh, got Matthews and Clayson, three guys that, fr quite frankly, we don't see running up front very often. So this is going to be a huge blow for them. Though maybe not so much for Tanner Clayson, he snuck through and grabbed the lead. But this is going to give uh, quite a few people uh, the opportunity to get back onto the lead lap. Joseph Howard, car 17, running in second place. And Tanner Clayson really having some trouble fending off the 17. I think that car is hurting from that accident. Howard goes to the lead. Rachel Rainsford follows. Howard trying to get past the Riggs sisters. Leslie into the back of her sister, sending Allie shooting across the track and up into the wall, almost wiping everybody out. And where's the caution flag? Bowman Gray Stadium, as I'm sure many of you know, is the mecca of crash fests. But these flagmen don't seem to know that as they have no idea what to do when there is an incident. A bit further back in the field, uh, we have a few cars go riding up into the wall. Rachel Rainsford and Luke Pellerin, car 86X. Uh, Pellerin running in fourth place. Uh, he's not going to lose that many positions. He's the last car on the lead lap, but once again, this does not bring out the yellow. This does, however. John Hawks in the 114 getting turned around by Barton Sandy. Uh, rather, after contact with Sandy, I don't think Hawks gave him much room off of turn two. But we do get another yellow, so maybe the flagman just lost it. I don't know. I wouldn't put it past them. As uh, Howard continues to lead the race, Tanner Clayson in second place. Uh, Leslie Riggs, car 50, is many laps down. Kevin Monroe, uh, who led earlier, not quite so far off the lead lap, but the M&J cars still racing Howard. Uh, Luke Pellerin getting by Tanner Clayson. This is the battle for third right here. Uh, Pellerin in the beat-up farce modified, still very fast. Okay, maybe not as fast as the lead cars, but still fast enough to uh, engage in a battle for position. This is uh, Luke Pellerin's best run ever. 
And now we have a battle for the lead between Joseph Howard and uh, Rachel Rainsford. Coming down to about 15 laps to go right now. Rainsford on the inside of Howard. Howard runs wide off of four, just barely misses the wall. These two used to duke it out in the DM Master Cup Series, and now tonight they fight for the win in a uh, very wet crash fest. Circumstances that I don't think they ever have imagined in their time in Master Cup. As Rainsford runs turn one very wide. She's in the wall. Joseph Howard closes right back up. Rainsford trying to hold off Howard for her third win of the year. Howard uh, trying to get his second, and if Howard pulls it off, it, it would be the first time that Howard's won anything in this series as aside from the season opener. And now he's got a clear shot to the inside of Rainsford with just 10 laps to go now. Rainsford and Howard have both emerged as championship contenders, and th these results are going to be huge for them. Howard will pull away and coming through turns three and four for the final time Joseph Howard takes the win at Bowman Gray not a single car escaped damage tonight but Joseph Howard certainly had one of the uh, cleanest as you see uh, he was about to put fourth place Tanner Clayson a lap down Howard comes away with 111 points for leading the most laps although I do expect that he will get a penalty for um, not paying attention coming out of the pit lane as will Allie Riggs and uh, Casey Campbell, most certainly, uh, as well as Barton Sandy, uh, coming home in sixth place, three laps down. Oh, what a mess this race was. Hopefully the men and women in round two will not follow that example, as Harry Essanola leads the field to the green flag. Jim Hayes, car 77, starting on his outside, and this start is much less one-sided than in round one. Howard and Hayes pulling even, coming down the backstretch and into turn three. Hayes trying very desperately to get back into the Rookie of the Year fight as he really fell apart in these past few months. In fact, I do think that Hayes led that first lap, and here comes Herbie Finkelberg on the inside of Ramsey Cockiner. Finkelberg off to a very good start as uh, Enola finally pulls ahead of Hayes coming out of turn four, and you see that they're already about to encounter the back markers. Uh, the back markers especially slow, going a lap down on lap number three. Herbie Finkelberg turning around, Derek Dudding off of turn four right after he took the lead. That's going to be our first caution, and I believe that uh, Team Burr and the racing team are going to influence many more as Herbie Finkelberg leads on the restart. Trey Ashby, car 12, on the attack, settling in behind Ryan Griffin, who fell a lap down. Griffin now back on the lead lap. Trey Ashby got that top five at the 70-77 Speedway a few weeks ago, which was another crash fest. Uh, so that was a very good result for Ashby. He needed that, and he's looking to get another one. As Derek Dudding and Nami Mura turned into the grass at the same time, they both come flying back up the track and uh, in front of Cyrus Laterza, uh, replacing Bobby Porto in that 74 car. The yellow flag is out once again, and here is AJ Young being turned around by... Oh... Earl McDermott, what are you doing? McDermott, my usual partner up here in the OEN booth, just sent AJ Young flying across the grass and into a uh, pack of cars. Under caution here, several cars collected, including uh, points leader Rip Tyler. Tyler goes out of the race, and this is going to jeopardize his championship efforts. Earl, I do expect a uh, public apology on the air next week. Cletus McGuffey turned around by uh, Herbie Finkelberg after the restart. Trey Ashby leads the field back to another caution. And here we have uh, Derek Dudding as uh, Harry Asanola just got fed up with the 68, turns him into the wall. And uh, that's going to take Enola out of the race too. But it was a uh, heroic sacrifice by Enola as this takes Derek Dudding out as well. Trey Ashby continues to lead the race as uh, Ramsey Cockiner comes flying out of the pits and spears the 12 in the door the green flag comes out anyway that's easily one of the worst restarts i've ever seen although it does give trey ashby a huge lead uh he does have some significant damage on the right side of that car as herbie finkelberg uh and jim hayes give chase earl mcdermott um already uh not doing his reputation much good uh still running around in fifth though Kelly Posadas not giving Olenek much room off of turn two. And uh, the 88 gets turned around. That's going to be another caution 
working lap 26 just a quarter of the way through this race and we've already had quite a few yellows lucy barnton fourth place last time around after the restart and here she is running three wide with hayes and finkelberg barnton bouncing off of them as finkelberg goes into the wall uh now barnton and hayes side by side through turns one and two lucy barnton has uh been needing some good runs oh mcdermott in the grass and flying back across the track earl mcdermott after contact with laura cyrus and kyle gaffigan comes flying back up the track into uh herbie finkelberg and somebody else i think that was uh ashley tucker car 90 yellow flag once again out as uh earl mcdermott that 859 car the duck roll car really hurting mcdermott would go out of the race here is Cyrus Laterza, who has quietly worked his way up through the field. He is now in fourth. Laterza running tonight and at Road America in the 74 car in place of Bobby Porto, who just left the team. Uh, Porto says that um, the agreement to split with Mitchell and Sons was mutual, while other reports say that Mitchell and Sons told him to piss off. I don't know who to believe, but it... Uh, the result is all the same. Porto will not be driving for the rest of the season. Laterza will again be in their flagship 74 car at tonight and at Road America. And he will step back into the 75 to finish up his Tornado Alley Trophy campaign where he is tied with Tanner Clayson. Back to Trey Ashby who uh, loses the lead to Herbie Finkelberg thanks to the lapped car of uh, Tom Brayton that 100 for the, for, uh, the racing team. Laterza up to second now at least trying to wrestle second away from ashby ashby running wide he just brushes the wall and now opens up the door uh for jim hayes and that is ashley tucker car number 90 running around in fifth place ashby into the wall again bounces off the 90 and is turned around at the exit of four and that was a uh, very delayed reaction by the flagman to throw the yellow there uh ashby sitting in the middle of the track for about three seconds and then the flag man realized, wait, I should do something about this. After the restart, Finkelberg and Hayes side by side for the lead. Both of these men have been needing some good results. And here we have Joel Lennick, car 33, uh, getting involved in another mess as he gets turned around by uh, Trey Ashby off of turn two. Ashby with some significant damage to the front end of that 12 car. Jason Bates making a charge after the restart, challenging Kyle Gaffigan in car number 07 actually i think gaffigan may be a lap down jim hayes leads the race but he's opening up the door for jason bates bates jumps to the inside and he's going to try to clear hayes coming into turn three bates takes over the lead with 45 laps to go now uh jason bates uh finally got his first win at hokkaido a few months ago he snapped an 11 year winless streak but that was absolutely not an indication of the pace that he's shown over the years and he is now putting himself in position to grab another win ryan griffin bouncing off the wall after going the lap down to bates he holds up the 77 of hayes allowing bates to get away and that is ashley tucker car number 90 running in third place uh Jane, jason bates now held up by a couple of the back markers hayes closing right back in and now he's got tom brayton and ramsey cockiner to deal with Bates held up by uh, Brayton. He turns the 100 car way into the grass. Tom Brayton shooting back across the track and into the path of Jim Hayes. Hayes was not left with too many options there, but this does not bring out a caution. And you know what? I'm not going to bother protesting anymore. That was a huge blow for the 77 team as Jim Hayes had to pit. Ashley Tucker now running in second place. Tucker won in the uh, last rain race that we had back at mexico city as jessica graham blows up running in sixth place she's going to come to a stop on the track uh this does draw a yellow graham has had several good runs in her sophomore year in the series but this is not going to be one of them as jason bates leads on the restart jim hayes right on the inside and i think uh hayes took a swipe at the 51 car he's clearly not pleased at bates about that incident with the 100 car as bates runs wide off of four uh, allowing Ashley Tucker to have a clear shot at the inside coming into turn one Tucker into the lead as Jason Bates runs into the wall that is uh, Cyrus Laterza car 74 in third 
Jason Bates back on the attack around the 90 and he's going to take the lead back as Tucker gets held up by the 54 of Cletus McGuffey now. McGuffey still in this race. Uh, Tom Brayton still in the race as well. So they're still going to be making life miserable for the leaders. Jim Hayes runs turn four wide and into the wall. Almost wipes out the 51 car. And that's going to do even more damage to the 77 car. Uh, Jim Hayes will pull it into the pits and lose a couple more laps. He came into this race needing to overtake Andre Kinasa in the Rookie of the Year standings. Kinasa blew up in the last round, but Hayes is not going to make up much ground as he pulls right out into Ryan Griffin in the 86 car. So I'm sure that any sympathy that people had for Jim Hayes just went out the window. Hayes would be ordered to meet with race control as Jason Bates leads this race with just five laps to go. Cyrus Laterza under the 90 of Tucker for second place as Bates leads by about six car lengths. Bates already trying for his second series victory, but he's got to negotiate with the 54 of Cletus McGuffey. Bates runs very wide. He bounces off the turn four wall. He pulls in front of Laterza, trying to block the 74 car, but uh, that 51 car is hurting as Tucker gets into the back of the 54, now sending him around. No caution though, as Laterza jumps out to a big lead. Bates heads to the pit lane, that car is pretty much toast as Cyrus Laterza brings the Michelin Sun 74 car which has been plagued by crashes and mechanical failures across the line to take his first Arla Elite Series victory. And this win will give him some leverage against Tanner Clayson in the Tornado Alley Trophy. That win would allow him to trump over Clayson if they both fail to qualify for Rockford. Ashley Tucker comes home second, a very good record for her, uh, Tucker in the rain races this year. Herbie Finkelberg third, and he was the last car to finish on the lead lap. Jason Bates uh, fell two laps down, but still comes home in fifth. And now looking at the point standings, uh, Rip Tyler leads by just two points over Joseph Howard, although I do expect that to change. Uh, there is no way that Joseph Howard is getting away without a penalty. Uh, Lady Bell third. Uh, Casey Campbell in the same boat as Joseph Howard. No way she's getting away without a penalty either. Taylor Brillen trails by 20 points. Uh, she needs to pick herself up soon. Otherwise, she's going to be in too big of a hole. Rachel Rainsford gains some valuable points on the championship. Ditto Ashley Tucker. Harry Asanola fell out of the race. Uh, Nami Mura and Andre Kinasa also fell out of their respective races. Uh, Leslie Riggs, 11th place, trailing by 93 points. And then it's a huge gap back to Herbie Finkelberg. I have to say it's an interesting battle for 12th place at this point. Only four points separate Finkelberg and Bigsby Foot, And then we have another interesting battle for uh, 16th as uh, just nine points separate the uh, Rus Autosport 82 and Zachary Zins. We have just one race weekend left to go before the Rockford 200. And that will be the uh, Sleazy Cheesy 160 at Road America.